Okay, this is section 6.5. It's about powers um, that look like you wouldn't be able to solve them without a calculator, but we're going to learn how to. Um, it's a little bit out of date, but it's good math either way. So the key to questions like this is coming up with a prime factorization, uh, which b basically means just breaking down a number into its factors that are prime. So just for example, off the top of my head, if I want to do a prime factorization of um, 422, the easiest way is to just divide out small prime numbers like 2 and 3 and 5 and see what you have left over. So I know this is 2 times 211, and I'm already kind of stuck because I don't know if anything goes into 211. Um, one moment. Let me try that again because I think I ran into a prime number. I think 211 is prime, so it's still the prime factorization. 422 equals 2 times 211. Um, but let me pick one that works a little bit better. Um, how about 270? Okay, any number that ends in 0, 5 will go into, so that's a good place to start. 270 is 5 times 54. And then any number whose digits add up to a multiple of 3, 3 goes into. So I know 3 goes into 54. And I also know 2 goes into it because it's even. But let's see, 3 will go in, what's this, 18 times, I believe. Um, 3 times 20 would be 60, and I have two less 3s than that. So this is 3 times 6, which is 3 times 2. And you end up with a prime factorization of 270, which equals 2 times 3 to the third times 5. So this is the key to being able to solve problems like this one. Um, let's start with something like 64 to the 3 halves. Okay, and this one you could almost do without prime factorization. This can be the square root of 64, which is 8, and then 8 cubed. Um, but just to make it a little bit easier, let's do the prime factorization of 64. You know, 64 is 8 times 8, which is... 2 times 4, just 2 times 2 times 2. And this 8 is also 2 times 4 and 2 times 2. So 64 turns out to be 2 to the 6th power. So I'm just going to replace 64 with 2 to the 6th power to the 3 halves. And then I've got my rules for exponents to rely on. I'm going to be multiplying... 2 to the 6, I'm going to do 2 to the 6 to the 3 halves, which is 2 to the 6 times 3 halves, and 6 times 3 halves is 9. That's 18 halves, or 9. So then I just do 2 to the 9th. Um, I already know from my other work over here on the side that 2 to the 6th is 64, so I basically need to double that um, 3 more times. 2 to the 6th is 64. Then 2 to the 7th would be 128. 2 to the 8th would be 256. And 2 to the 9th would be 512. So a little bit, a little bit of work in involved, but without a calculator, I've found that 64 to the 3 halves is 512. Okay, another example. How about... 256 to the 3 fourths. All right, um, I just figured out a minute ago that 256 is 2 to the 8th. So if it's 2 to the 8th to the 3 fourths. So basically you take your base of your power and do it, it's prime factorization. Now I can multiply 8 times 3 fourths. And 8 times 3 fourths is 24 fourths, or 6. And 2 to the 6th equals 64. So again, with no calculator, you've pretty much um, taken care of it um, without uh, having to use a calculator. You can do these kind of weird exponents. And uh, if you prime, you do the prime factorization of the base, they get a lot easier. Um, so this section... Section 6.5 is, that's basically it. There's a few more problems that are a little bit um, 
look a little bit differently. I'll do one more of those, and then we'll move on and do another section. Part of your part of your problems, there's a section that looks like this. Something like, let's see, the cube root of 128 times the square root of 32. And the instructions say simplify the expression by first transforming the radicals to exponential form. Leave the answer as an exact form as a radical or a power, not a decimal approximation, which means you don't use your calculator to get a decimal approximation of what this equals. You find out exactly what it equals using your formulas. So 128, I also learned up here in green that that's 2 to the 7th. And I also know that the cube root is a one-third power. And 32, that's 2 to the 5th. And the square root is a one-half power. So this is 2 to the 7 thirds times 2 to the 5 halves. And if you have two powers with the same base, multiply them together, then you add the two powers, or the two exponents. So I need to add 7 thirds and 5 halves. All right, so these are going to have a common denominator of, looks like 6 is my best option. It's 14 sixths plus, uh, this one needs, let's see, that's 15 sixths. My least favorite word is sixths. 29 over 6 ends up being your exponent, so this is 2 to the 29 sixths. And it says to check with a calculator to confirm um, 2 to the 29 sixths. Let's see here. 2 to the power 29 over 6 in parentheses is 28.5. My original question was, what's the cube root of 28 times the square root of 32? So let's see, math, cube root of 128 times the square root of 32 is, oh, I missed one. Let me try that again. 32 is, there it is, 28.5087. All right, so you can confirm that it works with your calculator, but you don't need your calculator to end up with this answer. All right. Um, just quickly, this is a, uh, the next section, 6.6, six, is on scientific notation. And you all have taken a good bit of science, so you've probably done some scientific notation before. And basically, this is a system that lets you deal with really, really big numbers without having to write a bunch of digits. Um, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time, because like I said, you know a lot about this already. Um, so for instance, when I win the Powerball, I'm going to win $178 million. Millions aren't too bad, you know, I've got this many digits, but in a lot of science applications, when you start talking about chemistry and how many molecules are in stuff, we've got, you know, times 10 to the 20 is the power. That's a lot of digits, you don't want to write them all. So just as an example, 178 million would be 1.78 times 10 to the however many decimal places 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's 1.78 times 10 to the 8th power. And um, that's really all there is to it. If you've got, let's say, um, if you have some sort of measurement of a tiny distance and you've got this many, I don't know, centimeters, this is the same as, let's see, you want to move it until you have one number to the left of the decimal point. One, two, three, four, five, six spots. And then my answer would be 3.64 
times 10 to the negative 6. All right, if you move the decimal point right to get into scientific notation, it's 10 to the negative. If you move it to the left, it's 10 to the positive. So 10 to the, the um, numbers with the negative exponents, those are really tiny numbers. And the positive exponents, those are really big numbers. Um, if I'm assuming you know too much about this, don't hesitate to ask in class. I just want to do a quick example or two. Um, about 8.15 times 10 to the third. times 2.296 times 10 to the negative 18. All right. And the instructions here say the answer should have only, should also have one significant digit. Multiply or divide mentally by first converting to scientific notation, if necessary, and rounding to one significant digit. The answer should also have one significant digit. And I don't know what you know about significant digits, but this has three significant, or we call them sig figs in chemistry class. And here are four. They're telling us to do this mentally by rounding these off. So I'm just going to call this 8 times 10 to the third. The difference in those two numbers is 8,150 compared to 8,000. And if you think of it in terms of like money, if I've got $8,150 in my pocket, then the 150 that we rounded off isn't that, that big of a deal. Um, over here, 2.296, that's basically 2 times 10 to the negative 18th. All right, that 0.296 in a number this small becomes really insignificant. So I've made them each have one significant digit. So now this is 16, so I just do my 8 times 2. And then 10 to the third times 10 to the negative 18th is 10 to the negative 15th. But since my 16 has two significant digits, and since I have this is 16.0. I have two digits to the left of the decimal point. I want to move that decimal point one time over and get 1.6 times 10 to the, and since I moved it to the left, think about what that's going to do to my exponent. I'm going to change that to negative 14 because I need to increase because I moved left. And finally, since it asked me for just two signif or one significant digit, I can round it off to 2 times 10 to the negative 14th. All right, so sometimes working with this stuff is a little weird. Let me do one more. One more with scientific notation and significant digits, such as, let's see, 1.72 times 10 to the negative 5 and 3.6 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, and the rule basically is this. If you have two numbers you're multiplying together, you have to go with the minimum amount of significant digits. Um, talk to your science teachers about um, why that's the case. But basically it means if you have one number that's rounded off to the millions, uh, or to whatever place, and you have another one that's very specific, you can only have as much accuracy as your w your most rounded off number. So here I have two sig figs, here I have two, and here I have three. My answer needs to have two because I have to go with the smaller of those two numbers. So anyway, let's see. I need to multiply the 1.72 and the 3.6. And I will get 1.72 times 3.6. That is 6.192. So 
you just multiply the first part, the um, the non 10 to the power part, and then add your exponents, and I get uh, 10 to the negative 16. Double check here. Yes, and since I have two significant digits as my limit, let's call this 6.2 times 10 to the negative 16. All right, so I talked a little bit more about that than I wanted to, but um, you you should know some of it, and if not, we can talk more about it in class. Um, ask your science teachers why these things are the way they are, and we'll just talk about multiplying them together. Okay, so that's your video. Hope you enjoyed 6566. Six, six. Young out.